I'm Cynthia Allen here with Bob Ray Sanders. Thanks for joining us for Taking Sides. Bob Ray, um, health care or Obamacare, as it's come to be known, is sort of back in the news this week for a variety of reasons. The first is that the exchanges open again um, on Saturday. So we're expecting maybe more people will be, in, be enrolling, but there's some news there, too. Yeah, well, I mean, more people will be enrolling, of course, and maybe not as much as they had originally intended, but over 9 million, and that's 9 million who wouldn't have had insurance otherwise. And not necessarily. Some of those folks are going to be people who already have insurance but choose a plan on them. But, but people who are saving money uh, as a result of getting this kind of insurance and getting more benefits for their family. So that's, that's a good thing. I mean, you know, people didn't like it when it was being uh, instituted, but I think people are on it now and they're loving it. Well, people still don't like it, and actually they're not loving it because the numbers are actually upside down. There's still more than 50% of the American public who, do, who find Obamacare unfavorable. And the large reason um, why that is the case, I think, was revealed in some, some news that we got this week, or a revelation, I think you called it earlier. Um, we learned that one of the, the, the authors of, of the Obamacare bill basically said the only reason it passed was because it was um, politically opaque and because the American public are stupid. Jonathan Gruber said that, or video of him saying that was surfaced. So I think that's a lot of the reason why people still don't trust this law, because they realize that it was passed. Um, it was passed in a non-transparent way in order to ram something through. And so they well, don't, you well, know, they don't like just, what's in it. I disagree that it was not transparent way. I mean, it was out there. And by the way, the public didn't vote on this. I mean, there are representatives that they sent to Congress to vote on it. That's who passed the bill. And I don't think all of them are stupid. Now, I think there are members of Congress who are stupid and more stupid than the American public. But Well, a lot but, of them were voted out but recently. I, I think people understood that there were certain things about this health care law that they liked. They liked the idea that they could keep their kids on until they were 26 years old once they graduated from college. They liked the idea of being able to uh, not have pre-existing conditions, determine whether or not they can have insurance. They like the idea of getting people who had not had insurance before into insurance bank. So, I mean, I think the public understood that. Well, see, those are some good ideas, and those are things that actually Republicans and Democrats can agree on. It's just how you go about doing it. The problem with this law is that through the subsidies and through the way the law is created, it doesn't actually address the fundamental problem with health care in America, which is cost. It doesn't actually reduce health care costs. Giving someone a subsidy, giving a middle-class family a subsidy, doesn't actually reduce the actual cost of the law because you've increased you've increased their premium generally and now you're just you're just creating more taxes and you're creating more government programs to help pay it down but you're not addressing the real original cost well, that's I mean, what reform was supposed to do and it didn't well I mean the thing is I, I think if you had more people supporting this law as opposed to trying to pose it and tear it down at every twist and turn maybe we could get to some of those real issues that you th say are issues but we we had a, a whole party decided they did not want any part of this law and now you got the public out there accepting it and they are accepting it the people who are on it well uh, and, and maybe we, we some can, people don't we can disagree about that but I think what, what we're going to see in the next Congress when we're going to have a Republican Senate and a Republican House is some opportunities to get some to make some reform. I agree that we shouldn't repeal this law outright. I don't think that's good. I think that's what the Republicans are going to try to do. But there are ways to reform the law. There are parts of the law that Republicans and Democrats can can believe both believe should be repealed, like the medical device tax, like the employer mandate, like some of the community rating provisions. So I think that that's what we need to attack. And the president and Congress have agreed to work to, Well, oh, and, apparently and, have agreed and, to work I, together. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that the Democrats agree with what you just said, but uh, whether it happens or not, the truth of the matter is the Republicans like most of what's in this law. And they still are talking about repeal because that plays politically. And you talk about politically opaque. That's what's politically opaque to me. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's for another day. Thanks for joining us.